So we haven't seen the truly dominant side of Antonio Brown just yet, but this is as good a spot as any for him to truly erupt. The Falcons offense is on fire right now and opposing teams are putting up big numbers against them in shootouts. With the injuries suffered at multiple levels, the Falcons defense has been more than willing to oblige in their quest. While Atlanta has scored over 30 points in each of the last three weeks, they've also allowed 34 points per game in that span. AB hits double digit catches and clears 100 yards for the first time in 2018 this weekend. I'm fearlessly forecasting 10 catches, 135 yards and a touchdown. Drawing fewer than four looks per game, Hooper's volume has disappointed. His best week came in week two when he caught a season high five balls and scored his only touchdown of 2018. Otherwise, it's been three catches for not even 25 yards. Still, Cooper has managed four red zone looks over the last four weeks, and that doesn't figure to change in week five at Pittsburgh, a game with not just shootout potential, but probability. Plus, the Steelers gave up 10 catches to the cadre of Ravens tight ends last Sunday night. I'm fearlessly forecasting five catches for 52 yards and a score. Off a disappointing performance against the rival Baltimore Ravens, Big Ben will get his mojo back in week number five. Well, you look at uh, the Atlanta defense, it is ravaged by injuries, particularly down two starting safeties in that secondary. Atlanta on the season has allowed the fifth most fantasy points, a 70.4 completion percentage, 296.3 yards per game, and a 9-3 to touchdown to interception split to opposing signal callers. Big Ben, who has been teetering on that top five QB line this year will easily easily finish inside that range in week five. He goes for 308 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, and one interception. Rookie Calvin Ridley is a bona fide rising star in the NFL. While the touchdowns will come to a halt at some point, seriously, that's a lock. Don't be a sheep. His ability is not to be questioned. Ridley is a smooth route runner, able to dust the consistently soft coverage he sees playing across from Julio Jones. That should continue this week against a god-awful Steelers defense that's allowing 220 yards to wide receivers per game this season. That's second most in the entire league. Seriously, what is this unit doing? They don't press anyone at the line and then routinely blow coverage down the field. While Ridley's yet to play more than 65% of the snaps in any game this season, his 20% share of the team's air yards in one of the NFL's top offenses is more than enough to keep him in the circle of trust. I'm fearlessly forecasting seven catches for 99 yards. We know this Steelers-Falcons game is destined to be a shootout, and it currently has the highest over-under of the week. So it's everyone in the pool for this one. Juju snapped his streak of 100-yard performances against Baltimore last week, but he still saw 11 targets. There's no reason to be concerned about the young star receiver. Juju lines up in the slot on 86% of his snaps, and those middle-of-the-field routes should pit him against the decimated linebacker and safety core of the Falcons. I'm fearlessly forecasting nine catches for 93 yards. <sighs> so you people are out here complaining about Julio Jones again this year? Come on, man, relax. Julio is literally the only receiver who could be on pace for an 1,800-yard season and have people still whining. Jones leads all wide receivers in air yards this year and plays in an offense that's smashing right now. There's nothing to worry about here. Julio and the Falcons face the Steelers in a likely shootout this week. Yards beget touchdowns. Don't forget that. I'm fearlessly forecasting eight catches, 117 yards, and his first touchdown of the year. It is not out of the realm of possibility that Matt Ryan finishes as the QB one of ones in week number five. He's got the mother of all matchups on paper as the Pittsburgh Steelers and that downtrodden secondary have allowed the most fantasy points, 8.1 yards per attempt, 324.5 yards per game, and three touchdowns per game through the air alone to the quarterback position. Ryan is QB4 on the season, averaging 329 yards per game and 9.1 yards per attempt, gets the job done. Hopefully one of these touchdowns I'm about to predict will finally go to Julio Jones. Ryan rolls up 349 passing yards, three touchdowns with one INT. 
Kevin Coleman had 17 touches last week, over 70 yards in the game, but Ito Smith vultured a touchdown. That was no good. Uh, we have the possibility of a Devontae Freeman return in week five, which of course would be a hit to Coleman's fantasy value. The matchup ahead is Pittsburgh, and they rank number 22 against the run, so it's been a bit of a stingy defense for opposing running backs. Again, the possibility that Coleman loses some workload here, that's a major concern. I don't think he finds the end zone in this one. I am going to give him 11 carries for 51 yards. I'm also going to give him four receptions for 26. Well, he didn't stiff arm Chris Conti to 112 yards in this one. McDonald once again proved to be a vital piece of the Steelers' offense in week four. Converting all five of his looks for 62 yards, McDonald averaged 12.4 yards per reception and racked up sizable yak by making several tackle-breaking plays, one of which set up Antonio Brown for a score, by the way. McDonald tied A.B. for catches and yards last Sunday night. Used as a slot receiver in college, that's a fun fact, McDonald offers top 10 appeal versus the Falcons in week five. I'm fearlessly forecasting six receptions for 75 yards and a touchdown.